what was your reaction? Well, that's disgusting. <laughs> Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 grossest parasites and what they do to your body. I never thought in a million years it could be a parasitic infection. I was terrified. For this list, we'll be looking at the most bizarre and disgusting parasites that pose the greatest risk to the humans they infect. Which of these freeloaders grosses you out the most? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Botfly. Teamwork makes the nightmare work with this parasite. A botfly resembles a bumblebee, and its larvae act as internal parasites for mammals. Their eggs are laid on blood-sucking species such as mosquitoes, and if you happen to be bitten by one of these, you have more than just itchiness to worry about. The botfly hijacks a mosquito in mid-flight and lays its eggs on the mosquito's body using a special glue. When the mosquitoes bite a mammalian host, the heat from the mammal's body causes the glue to melt, and the eggs fall onto the host's skin, where they hatch into larvae. Botflies can also lay eggs on you directly. An infestation of fly larvae in this manner is known as myiasis. While botflies themselves are usually not fatal for hosts, the resulting skin irritation can be deadly. Botfly larvae are ringed with little tiny black spines, and those are there so that if you try to pull it out, it's going to get lodged into place. It's a great way to make sure that it doesn't get pulled out by the host. Although these parasites can be removed, prevention is always better than cure. If you are unable to avoid being around botflies, always keep insect repellent handy and wear clothes that will protect your arms and legs. Number 9. Schizosoma hebatobium. The most common parasitic infection in humans is schizosomiasis, which is typically transmitted by schizosomia hematobium, also known as urinary blood fluke. Evidence of this parasite, which has only been found in Africa and the Middle East, goes back to at least ancient Egypt. The organism infects human hosts through their urinary tracts, leading to urinary schizosomiasis. When schistosoma eggs become lodged in organ tissues, the immune system responds by encasing them in a hard shell of specialized cells called a granuloma. Over time, the granulomas build up and cause inflammation, which in turn can lead to organ failure and ultimately even death. This is also the second leading cause of bladder cancer in humans. The resulting disease is brought about by the fluke's eggs, and this can be avoided through proper wastewater treatment and water purification. Traveling around the body, they transform into the final form, the adult worm. Male and female worms pair up, producing thousands of eggs every day. It's these eggs that cause all the damage. Some of the symptoms of schizosomiasis include bloody urine, chest pain, and seizures. Prasaquantel is a drug used for treatment, though it's not guaranteed to cure the disease. Number 8. Babesia Scientists have identified more than 100 species of Babesia, a type of parasite that's transferred through tick bites, leading to red blood cell infections. The organism actually lives within mice and is transmitted from mouse to mouse through ticks. And these ticks take a blood meal, and when they do, they pick up the organism, and then uh, they go through a, a series of molts. And The resulting disease is known as Babesiosis, which presents symptoms that are similar to those of malaria. So people who don't have a spleen, people with cancer, people who have HIV AIDS and also the extremes of age, newborn infants and um, people over the age of 60 tend to have more severe disease. Treatment methods for babesiosis include antibiotics, antimicrobials and exchange transfusion in which affected red blood cells are replaced with safe ones. Eventually, the parasites destroy the red blood cells, flooding the body with their offspring. While there are more than 100 types of Babesia, not all of them are dangerous to humans. Keep in mind that it can take several weeks after infection for symptoms to arise. As long as you stay away from ticks, you can stay away from Babesia. Number 7. Whipworm This species of roundworm earns its name from its long and skinny appearance. When a whipworm makes it into your large intestine, it can lead to trichuriasis or whipworm infection. Often, hosts stand a greater risk of this by consuming items contaminated by the parasite's eggs, such as water or vegetables. Whipworms can bring about intense diarrhea, anemia, and further problems through co-infection, where their effects are amplified by another parasite. Estimates put the number of infections around the world at 600 to 800 million. To reduce the prevalence of this, it's imperative that everyone has access to clean water and is well informed on basic hygiene habits, such as hand washing before eating. 
Number 6. Anasacus simplex There's nothing simple about this parasite, otherwise known as a herring worm. These nematodes infect hosts, resulting in a condition known as anasachiasis, or herring worm disease. Though direct herring worm infections often occur in marine animals, such as sea lions, they spread easily among other species. Humans can contract these parasites from eating seafood that hasn't been properly cooked. To prevent anasachiasis, it's important to stay away from raw or undercooked seafood. It moves. Nice and easy. Wow, it's long, yeah. If infection does occur, the host could present with symptoms such as diarrhea, nausea, and sometimes anaphylaxis. However, these are typically relieved within hours if the worms are removed through an endoscopy. Number 5. Guinea Worm You might have heard about guinea worm disease and how prevalent it's been in certain parts of the world. Also known as dracunculiasis, this condition occurs when a host ingests drinking water contaminated by larvae, which eventually grow in their body. As these worms develop, they cause harrowing blisters, which burst open and could lead to potentially fatal bacteria infections. What's really amazing is that all this time, this whole year during which the worms have been living in your body and growing to considerable size, um, your body's immune system seems to have been completely fooled and is unaware that there's anything strange going on. While guinea worm disease once affected millions of people each year, improved water sanitation methods have reduced the number of annual cases to just 13 in 2022. The only way to stop it is to keep people from drinking the immature worms. A simple cloth filter will do the trick. Through continued education and awareness, that number could one day become zero. Anyone living with guinea worm disease needs to have the parasite properly removed to avoid any further infections or damage from the wound. One person who carries the worm can contaminate 200 to 300 people. Number 4. Eye Worm This parasite didn't get its name because it has particularly good vision. Rather, it's because it travels, among other places, through the eyes of its hosts. Mango fly and deer fly bites introduce these nematode worms to human bodies and cause a nasty condition known as loa loa filariasis. Although a host's eyesight usually isn't compromised by eye worms, it's incredibly uncomfortable to have one wriggling around up there. Hosts can start to feel itchy, sore, and exhausted. Though it can take months for symptoms to arise and it's possible to be completely asymptomatic. The worm can be surgically removed, but medication is also recommended to ensure the parasite is gone for good. Number 3. Pork Tapeworm Consuming raw or otherwise undercooked pork can have consequences far beyond just some indigestion. It can also lead to contracting a pork tapeworm. Larvae from the tapeworm eggs migrate to muscle and other tissues, including the brain. When these parasites enter a host's body, they cause tiniasis, an infection that can also bring about what's known as cystocercosis, also known as tinea solium, infects both humans and pigs. Sufferers of this condition typically experience seizures. Doctors can treat tiniasis by prescribing oral medication, but it's fairly easy to avoid these parasites. The parasite larvae form cysts in the muscle tissue of a pig. If a human eats undercooked pork that contains the cysts, they get infected. In the human gut, the cysts hatch into adult tapeworms. Make sure all meat you consume, pork or otherwise, has been cooked at the proper temperature. Look for any signs of undercooking, and when in doubt, use a food thermometer to confirm if the heat is just right. Number 2. Screwworm Fly Bot flies aren't the only parasites that infect their hosts with myiasis. One other culprit is the screwworm fly, often just called a screwworm. These flies lay hundreds of eggs inside open wounds of humans and other warm-blooded species, providing a safe place for the larvae to feed. The female fly lays its eggs in the open wounds of living animals. The eggs hatch into larvae or maggots. The maggots uh, literally feed on the, the flesh of the living animal and can actually kill an animal in fairly short order of time. They get their name from how they screw themselves into a host's flesh. The screw worm feeds on the flesh of live animals, invading open wounds, and can quickly kill livestock, wildlife, and pets. The screw worm was thought to have been eliminated in the U.S. in 1982, but in 2016, a Florida county experienced an outbreak. 
Since contracting this parasite can be fatal, it's vital to continue research and prevention efforts. Currently, there are no FDA-approved medications for screwworms, but they can be surgically removed, and antibiotics can be used to avoid any secondary infections. I just don't understand it, and I think we need to stop it before it, it infestates everything. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into settings and switch on your notifications. Number 1. Brain-Eating Amoeba Anything that starts with brain-eating has to be bad news. The amoeba live in the sediment on the bottom of lakes and ponds. When people stir it up, the amoeba get into the water. What happens is someone goes underwater and this amoeba enters their nose and gets to their brain. Known scientifically as Nicleria fowleri, these parasites are present in water and they gain entry into the host's body through the nose. Nicleria fowleri is found in hot springs. That is very, very hot water. So it is viable in hot water. So don't think you can boil it out. Once inside the host, these amoebae make their way up into the brain. They then cause an infection known as primary amoebic meningoencephalitis, or PAM, which presents symptoms such as intense nausea, seizures, and hallucinations before proving fatal in as little as one day. If you are experiencing any of those symptoms, you need to get to a doctor right away. Though infection is not common, survival rates are incredibly low, with more than 97% of cases being fatal. For the greatest harm reduction, avoid getting fresh water or water from potentially contaminated sources up your nose. It all sounds scary, but you can protect yourself. The easiest thing to do, keep your head above water or wear nose plugs. Also, try to skip swimming in lakes and rivers when it's really hot outside. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.